So the man, the myth, the legend, Alejandro EV66. Pleasure meeting you, good sir. Hey, Walter. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So from what I understand, you're principally on X as a social media platform. Is that um, fair to say? I mean, I'm not. I'm just going to say that I joined X just to see a conversation about EVs happening. I do like to track what's happening with the DC charging infrastructure. I'm glad to see that expanding rapidly. Um, not only like right now, you will see most of my posts about Iona, but uh, other networks like Tesla now with their V4 uh, cabinets deployment, BP Pulse, Walmart. I mean, it's pretty exciting what's happening out there right now. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. It's like gangbusters. It's like it all, almost feels like um, we're in that phase where they were talking about when the car first was made and then gas stations were getting built all over the place because there's so many different organizations building electric vehicle charging all at the same time. At least that's what I've been seeing. Uh, but let's just start off with basics. You are an EV owner, I'm assuming. Uh, you want to just introduce yourself to the um, community here and talk about your EV journey and uh, what you initially what initially got you into EVs and what you currently drive? Yeah, I mean, my first EV, I mean, it was actually the first brand new car that I bought was a 2013 Nissan Leaf. I put like 55,000 miles on that one with the limited range and no DC charging infrastructure at all. Had to spend some time at some coffee shops just to make it home with a level two charger. And no battery uh, management either, right? Yeah. And after a few years of some battery degradation too. It was time for a change. Next one was a uh, plug-in hybrid, uh, but it just, I, it feels like a relief. Uh, uh, BMW T30e, I got a BMW i3 with Rex engine, a Tesla Model 3, and currently I am driving a BMW i4. Hmm. Yeah, the i4 has really been a solid platform. I haven't met an i4 owner who hasn't appreciated um, it as a car. And I understand the uh, 2026 model year is getting some additional improvements, if I remember hearing correctly. Yeah, I believe so. Some um, new inverters with better efficiency, a few other changes like That's, that. Yeah, the silicon carbide uh, inverter for the uh, faster um, acceleration, so the more efficient use of the energy from the pack and giving it a little bit more horsepower, from what I understand. But... Um, as I also understand, you spend a good deal of time uh, traveling the interstates. Is that also fair to say? Well, in the last year or so, it's been mostly between Texas and Colorado. I'm currently living in Denver, uh, but I have family like here. Interstate 35, mostly? Well, I-70 and 35, yes, that's correct. A mm -hmm. lot um, of the times, you know, I just take those back roads from Texas, crossing New Mexico. Um, a more interesting drive than just going through Kansas. But uh, just it's it's nice to see like how even just the last year, there's been a lot more infrastructure or new charging sites that have opened. Uh, so those trips are a lot easier than just last year. That's exactly what I was going to ask next is how has your experience been over time? So you've been a long time EV owner and it seems as though just recently a lot of nice looking stations that have higher power chargers have been uh, starting to be introduced into areas. So, and I know Texas in particular is definitely kind of like the beehive of activity for electric vehicle charging as of late. So have your road chips um, recently, like in the past year or so, been noticeably easier? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just like in the Dallas area or north or south of the Dallas Fort Worth metro area, there's a lot of new, even just Alpitronic sites that have opened. Like you now have their Walmart, Mercedes Benz. Uh, those are some that I've used quite often uh, at Bucky's. You know, it makes those sites very convenient. Uh, there are a few IONA sites, but they were not open during my last road trip. Um, I have charged into one in Houston, uh, the IONA recharger in Houston. Nice location with some canopies, uh, dog area, some vending machines. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, and let's not forget that there are also some uh, Tesla sites that have opened, and some of those have also been open to all EVs, some Navy sites, and 
or just with the magic dogs, uh, BMW still unfortunately doesn't have access to the full Tesla supercharging network, but there are still a few sites that are useful. Yeah, I was speaking to another I or an iX owner, and he said that you know BMW doesn't have official access into the supercharger, so it's just the magic dock locations. But he's saying it's getting to the point where he doesn't really mind not having access to the full supercharger network because there's so many of these other ones starting to come online. It's it's uh, starting to supersede the events is the way he was describing it. Yeah, and some areas of the country still need more chargers. Mm -hmm. So having an access to supercharging network will be useful. But if you stick to the main interstate, you will still find a lot of options. It still will be nice to get access. Yeah, Louisiana, Mississippi is kind of a tough area to travel if you're not in a Tesla right now. But it is starting to get better, as you say. But... Um, so one of the things that you're most uh, recognized for and very oftenly cited by myself and others is uh, the ability to spot permits. And I'd like to keep obfuscated your means of doing so because you've definitely found a way of being very effective at the uh, permit spotting uh, situation. I kind of come up at the other angle where once the stations are actually open, I uh, use the alternative fuel data center database to list the ones that are open. And then you're on the other side where uh, you're able to see them as they're starting to get spotted under construction. And I also do like uh, plug share sweeps and things like that. But um, one of the things that uh, has been very clear uh, through 2025 is that the number of locations that are starting to get permitting is really starting to increase, specifically with uh, Walmart and IANA. And um, as I understand IANA's intentions, uh, they're planning to go to 1,000 stalls by the end of this year using something that has been referred to as a funnel strategy, where they know that a certain number of the stations that they are trying to get to a build uh, completion state are um, not going to be successful, and only a small percentage are. So what they do is they go large with a very... Um, a large number of stations that are in the process of getting built. And then of those, a certain small percentage will actually be completed. But what that had created is just a, a storm of locations out there that are getting spotted. And uh, is that basically what you're seeing as well, is that there's just a tremendous spike in IANA stations out there? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I mean, some states like Florida and California and Texas are the states that we have seen the most permits. And even if it stays like California right now, I know of 14, 15 sites, but uh, we also know that they're planning at least at the moment more than 26 sites. Mm. And that's the number that it can be tracked based on the site plans that they have. Um, so we are getting almost 50% of what we know that they're planning. And some of those might not be even a permit at the moment, it's just at the planning stage. There's also like sometimes zoning difficult difficulties. I know that a site here in Denver uh, is basically on hold because it's being built next to a gas station. There is a zoning restriction where a gas station cannot open if there's already a, not a gas station a quarter of a mile mm. from the site. So some difficulties, and like you said, that's why they're going through that funnel process. Lots of permits, lots of planning, but uh, some of those sites might not even happen. Some of those sites can take over a year for the permits to be approved. Um, and it's not just Iona. This is difficulty of opening a charging site in a lot of states in, for basically every CPO. Yeah, and occasionally they seem to line the stars up just right and the station actually goes through to completion in a shorter amount of time. Uh, for instance, uh, where was it? Uh, the Obitz, Ohio location seemed to go from uh, construction to open in a very short amount of time. And uh, several others, there's obviously been coined IANA speed, but they also are faced with the sheer uh, realities of what it takes in order to uh, spin up a station. And as you say, there's very commonly um, problematic situations with zoning and getting permitting and ex inspections and all these things are things out of their control. Um, but just if you had to guess, do you think they would make it to 1,000 by the end of this year? And then we could also guess uh, whether or not 30,000 by the end of 2030. I have my own opinion, but I'll 
leave it to you because you, you're a little bit closer to the perspective than uh, I am, I think, at this point. Well, I, and your guess might be a better guess than mine because I really been tracking just the permitting process. What happens after, it's not something that I've been tracking as good as you. Like how many souls do they have at the moment? That, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would guess like there are a few sites that seem that they will start construction soon. Um, so I think like it's a goal that they said, it, they might get close to it, uh, but we still don't know if they're going to achieve the goal for the end of the year. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's going to be close, but I'm not sure if I'm 100% willing willing to commit that, yes, I think they're going to make it because, you know, we're at the end of June as we're recording this episode today, which is halfway through the year. And really right now, they only have like a, about a buck 50 stalls to the 1,000 that they're hoping to get by the end of the year. So they're really going to have to push the pedal down in order to see if they can make it to that 1,000 by the end of the year. And I do think 30,000 by the end of 2030 with the current amount of activity that I'm seeing is not out of the uh, question either uh, because they don't seem to be slowing down at all. No, um, and like they release a map of all planned stations. You know, you have seen that map where it's covering I-70, part of California, but there are some plans that we have already seen out of that area. Like I've seen work that has been done like in a state like Montana, for example, nothing concrete right now, nothing to share, but uh, they do start, they do seem like they're starting to plan for that phase two, uh, you know, just expanding the area that they're going to cover because like we've seen, it takes sometimes over a year to have a site open since the permitting process start. Yeah, it's like that I-70 was their tip of the spear, but now they're starting to fan out to multiple different locations. And basically, I think everything is on the table right now. If you call Ayana, the answer is always going to be <laughs> yes, at least that's what it feels like to me. And also, I understand that in to some extent, probably to a lesser extent, you're also seeing uh, Walmart builds occurring. Um, and they, too, I have had my eye on to um, suspect a very similar amount of um velocity or um, activity in the Walmart build. And I, I really question whether or not IANA or Walmart, once the dust settles, will have more stalls in by 2030. This is going to be very close. But uh, just like in the past month, have you also seen a lot of activity coming out of the Walmart energy locations? Yes, at the beginning of the year, um, IONA was uh, filing a lot of those permits, but in the last month or so, I will say that I've seen more activity coming from Walmart. And it's not just one or two areas like it was at the beginning, mostly starting with Texas. But um, I mean, there's been some activity from Walmart in places that you didn't expect, East Coast, West Coast. Uh, there were a lot of permits around um, Omaha, um, like three or four sites that are planning just in, our, in that area of Omaha. Uh, so they're moving yeah, fast. I saw, I saw Landon's most recent update that was referring to that, and that was really surprising. Yeah, uh, if you want more information, you know, follow his channel, the Ar Arkansas e-traveler. Arkansas uh, e-traveler, yep. Yeah, and I've been working with him on trying to get a few of those permits. Even here around Colorado, there's like three or four sites that are known to be under permitting right now for Walmart. Yeah, and another thing I've been seeing as of late is there seems to be an increasing number of locations that have higher stall count. And Ayana has been teasing something called a beacon site. And Walmart also seems to be putting larger uh, stall count stations uh, when they're closer to interstates or some some approach that they're using to higher stall counts. But I'm definitely starting to see uh, an increasing um, reliance on stall count above 20. And I remember talking to someone in Ayana, I think it was uh, Ricardo, where he said that if we wanted to get to 1,000 by the end of the year, we can't just keep doing 10 stall stations. We have to eventually start doing bigger stations. So have you started to see like increased stall count in uh, the ones that are starting to be seen through permitting also? I mean, it's been a few months since we spotted like the first 
Iona Recharger with 20 stalls, and that's still like the maximum number of stalls that I've seen. They have four or five sides. I don't remember which one exactly that have 20 stalls. And are those going to be beacon sites? We still don't know. We'll be, I mean, hopefully once one of those get approved for construction, we'll get a press release from Iona with that info. Uh, there are some of those 20 stall sites that just have the chargers, no, uh, you know, the lounge or any of the amenities that we see on other sites. But some of those 20 stall sites also have uh, some amenities still not fully reveal what they're going to include, but it still seems like uh, they're going to have a mix. Some 20 soul sites are just have the chargers with canopies, and some will have a lounge, restrooms, um, maybe some vending machine, maybe that Amazon system where you just go in and grab what you need. Uh, but we still don't know. Uh, so we have to wait until at least one of those sites get approved for construction. Uh, maybe we'll hear more from Iona. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the first time that I hear that there's a beacon site under construction. I'll likely uh, head out there over the weekend in order to take a look at it, assuming it's a drivable distance uh, from where I live. And Walmart, too, has definitely seemed to be like initially they seem to be kind of testing the waters, but now they seem to be all in. And uh, on Landon's most recent update, there is mention of uh, stall counts, I think, above six, uh, like right around 16 or maybe a little bit higher. And so now the games begin to see who could outdo the other person. And uh, we as EV drivers tend to win in situations like that. So definitely looking forward to it. So uh, Alejandro, I'm much appreciated for you coming on. And I can't tell you how thankful we are for uh, what you do for the EV community. It's a tremendous help and a great service that you're providing. And uh, best wishes in the future, sir. Try to stay cool during the summertime and safe travels. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm just glad to see the DC charging infrastructure expanding rapidly and with more reliable hardware. Um, so, yeah, thanks for having me, Walter. Yeah, hopefully we'll continue to see the expansion continue to increase. Much appreciated for coming on. Good, sir. Thank you. Bye.